I'm Noenit from Laos. So today I, I would like to warmly welcome all of you from around the world to participate in, in Chicha Talk or Cha Tham. We have, today we have very interesting topic from Indonesia, from Bali, Iceland. So, and also we have very young uh, speaker to, to discuss today. Before I go to the detail of the discuss, I would like to introduce a little bit about the Chicha. Chicha, it stands for Southeast Asia Cultural Heritage Alliance, or we just call Chicha, it's a short name. It is a digital based network of Southeast Asia civil society organization engaging in cultural heritage conservation work. Um, actually, Chicha is from many different countries from Southeast Asia country, like from Indonesia, it's uh, Indonesian heritage task, and also from Lao, like me, and from Lao, we are Mobri from Lao. And uh, the Pinang heritage task from Malaysia, and from uh, Myanmar, also from Yangung Heritage Task and Heritage, Heritage Conservation Society of the Philippines from Philippines and Singapore Heritage Society from Singapore and Sajam Society under Royal Paragon from Thailand. And the last is Center for Research and Promotion of Cultural Heritage of Vietnam from Vietnam. Uh, even we are from different mm -hmm. country, different culture at different area, but we have the same goal, the same objective. We conduct many activities related to the cultural heritage and about the climate change. Um, actually today it's number 12 already. We have conduct um, many series from last two years. I also have done one series in C Chatting. You if you interesting you can review or from number one until uh, 12 today. Um, our aim or our objective is we try to protect cultural heritage in our community, our country, especially in, in, in Southeast Asia. Not we not only protect, we try to promote and try to sustain our cultural heritage to keep it for our young generation in very long future. And also beside of the cultural heritage, we also concern about the uh, climate change because now we can see different area, different country, we also all face about the climate change issue. That's why we have very interesting topic today from Bali and listen about Bali, I'm very interesting already now. And we have a moderator from Bali today. I would like to introduce her a little bit. She is very, very strong working woman, I think, because I saw her profile. She is, oh, conduct a lot of uh, research. Yeah, she, her name is Titin Patima. She's associate professor from uh, Indonesia. Her university is, um, uh, sorry if I pronounced it wrong, Tarumana Gara in Jakarta, Indonesia. Yeah, she have done a lot of um, research like um, cultural landscape, heritage conservation, heritage city, community, based development, culture, heritage, tourism, and rural uh, tourism. Clearly, she also involved in conservation activity with Indonesian Heritage Trust. Um, I can't imagine how hard work for her. Not only that, she is also assigned to be a coordinator of cultural landscape working group in Indonesia. And I have talked to her a little bit. So I would like to leave this floor to you, Titin uh, Fatima. The floor is yours. Please enjoy. Okay, thank you, Noi, for the introduction. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Nice to meet you all here. Uh, welcome. 
to all the participants of this uh, Chicha uh, Cha time uh, series number 12. Yeah. Uh, first of all, I would like to thank to the Shija Southeast ASEAN Cultural Heritage Alliance for giving me uh, the opportunity as the moderator. And today's uh, topic for Cha time is uh, Subak, sustaining uh, traditional knowledge in protecting nature in Bali, Indonesia. Uh, I'm sure uh, that most of all you already know about Bali. Yeah, <laughs> it is one of the most tourist destination in Indonesia that is famous for its uh, beautiful nature and culture. And if you visit Bali, uh, maybe you will notice about its uh, beautiful landscape consisting of a widespread a rice field and uh, the mountain of the background. Maybe you can see here <laughs> in my virtual background. Yeah, like this. Yeah. Uh, it is one of the example of uh, the result of a subak system. Yeah, it is traditional irrigation system that is very unique. And subak has already inscribed as the World Heritage uh, site by uh, UNESCO in 2012. And uh, the talk uh, will be delivered by Ms. Widya uh, Amasara from Indonesian Heritage uh, Trust. She will share about the subak from her view drawn upon the experience with the subak farmers and researchers through the Subak Field School, uh, the Bali International Field School for Subak, BIFSS, that is organized by the Indonesian Heritage Trust and its uh, partners. Uh, she will also explain how Subak encompasses tangible and intangible heritage, namely human, uh, nature, and the creator uh, in the face of a challenge, uh, such as natural disasters, uh, the pandemics. Uh, she will explain how uh, this heritage and the traditional knowledge of Subak can be an outlet for young people to learn about the resilience what in nature uh, and as a society. And uh, before the talk started, uh, let me introduce uh, the profile of the speaker today. Widya Amasara uh, is an Indonesian-based heritage enthusiast, experience in managing and monitoring cultural projects in non-governmental uh, organizations. She was coordinator in uh, culture division at Arsari Joyo Hadikusuma Foundation, all we call it uh, YAD from uh, 2018 until 2020 and is currently program coordinator at the Indonesian Heritage uh, Trust or we call BPPE. Uh, she completed her undergraduate uh, degree in Asia Pacific Studies from uh, Ritsumekang Asia Pacific University in Japan and her master's degree in Cultural Heritage Studies from University College London, United Kingdom. Uh, Okay, I think that's uh, for uh, the introduction of the, our speaker today. And for the participants, uh, you can write uh, your question in the question and uh, answer box. And I will read it uh, during the uh, discussion session after uh, Widya's presentations. So um, Widya, now the time is yours, uh, please. Hello, and thank you very much, Mutitin, for the uh, wonderful introduction. So, um, good morning, uh, good afternoon, good evening, everyone. Wish you all good health wherever you are. And uh, I thank you very much for for to Sicha for the invitation for the opportunity to be here in Cha Time. My name is Vidya Masara. I'm from the Indonesian Heritage Trust. I'm in charge of programs. I started professionally in the heritage field uh, probably around 2018. Yeah, so I'm still very, very green. Uh, well, I'm very excited to be here, but at the same time, uh, honestly, also a bit intimidated. Everyone here has years of experience under their belt and especially the moderator here. So what I'm about to share is probably just a tiny amount compared to that, all the accumulated experience in the field of heritage. But here goes nothing, I will share my stories and perspectives, and I hope that we all can walk out of this session learning something new about heritage. I myself am very excited to learn from everyone. 
Now, for me, heritage is especially fascinating because it has elements of history, of philosophy, values, elements that made, made up uh, good stories. I love stories because uh, one of the reasons behind that is in when I was in high school, my history teacher taught us history using the story approach. So I'm really fortunate to know that history is not just a bundle of dates, names, achievements, important events you have to memorize and be done with it just for a test. But rather, I understand, I know history as a series of connecting events, important events you have, important events, uh, cause and effects and uh, reasons why people did what they did and the consequences, some of which can still be felt to this very day. So this uh, is a huge influence to me and truly influence and underlines my approach to heritage today. So today I'm always looking for a story in heritage, something that can help me understand more about humanity. And it's probably why also I'm more partial towards intangible heritage because of this reason. So um, I, I would like to share my screen. Okay. okay, that brings us to the topic of today's talk now, about Suba, sustaining traditional knowledge in protecting nature in Indonesia. Now, a bit of a background story. Um, this is a, not a personal academic research I did on the subject. Uh, I think Dr. Titin already uh, mentioned that earlier in the introduction, but yeah. But this is rather a recollection, a recount, or a reflection, if you will, on things I learned during what is called a field school about Subak heritage. It's called Bali International Field School for Subak. It is a week-long uh, field school in Bali, is jointly organized by the Indonesian Heritage Trust with many partners such as Bali Kunasanti Foundation, Arsari Joyohari Kusumo Foundation, Design School Kyoto University, Subak Research Center at University of Udayana, University of Dwijendra, and the latest edition is University of Warmadewa. I think the principal, I wonder if the principal is here, Ibu Chatrini, Ibu Ari, thank you for organizing this school. Now, this field school has been around since 2015, but I only get involved after 2018. So that's three years, uh, nearly four years ago, three years ago. So first as a participant and then as a facilitator. So four of these field school and in each and every one of them, there is always something new to learn. Let me share. Yeah, this is the uh, field schools with I'm involved with 2019, 2018, 2019, and 2021. This is when the pandemic strikes, and then this is this one is last year. Now, first, I think one of the major uh, question here is first thing first. Um, what is Suba? Now, Suba is a cultural heritage from Bali Island, Indonesia. What you see here in the and behind me and uh, earlier behind uh, in the background of Dr. Titin, uh, the lush green paddy field is an aspect of it, the tangible part. Well, uh, to be honest, in my own opinion, I still find it difficult to accurately describe Suba in my own words. So I'll cite a Suba expert here from Professor Windia from Udayana University. Suba is a social traditional system in Balinese culture to utilize communal water for irrigation. So the lush green paddy field, the irrigation channels, the ritual for harvest and many things, the union between farmers, all of them are part of Suba system. Uh, maybe a verbal explanation like this won't truly do justice to the beauty and complexity of this heritage. So let me show you a video. Um, this video is made during last year's field school, shot by our participants, facilitators from Arsari Jayadi Kusumo Foundation, a partner of, of the Indonesian Heritage Trust. It's a bit on the long side, but uh, lots of greeneries to rest your eyes, many wonderful insights about Suba from various experts. And we have 30 minutes anyway, so please enjoy. Wait. Mm -hmm. Wait a minute. Mm. Here it is. 
Salam Lestari, selamat berjumpa sahabat Arsari bersama saya Tito Suryawan Staf Bidang Media dan Komunikasi Yayasan Arsari Joyo Hadikusumo Dan di kesempatan kali ini saya sedang berada di Desa Selat Kabupaten Karangasem, Bali Kita ini ada di sini untuk mengikuti kegiatan dari Bumi Pelestarian Pusaka Indonesia sebagai salah satu mitra dari IAD yang setiap tahunnya itu rutin menyelenggarakan sebuah kegiatan yang sangat keren sekali yaitu namanya Sekolah Lapangan Subak atau yang biasa dikenal dengan Bali International Field School for Subak BIFSS S2021. Intinya kegiatan ini tuh pingin membuat setiap orang aware dan sadar tentang betapa pentingnya peranan subak. Yang pasti keseruannya seperti apa? Yuk kita saksikan sama-sama di channel YouTube Yayasan Narsari Joyo Hadikusumo. Jangan lupa di like dan subscribe. Jangan skip iklannya. Salam lestari. Sepanjang negara pemerintah tidak memihak kepada produsen, yakni petani, maka subak akan selalu dalam kondisi bahaya. Karena apa? Karena petani tidak senang bertani, dia akan menjual sawahnya, dan itu berarti kita kehilangan nanti kebudayaan yang dihormati oleh dunia kita. Subak adalah lembaga sosial, tradisional, yang secara sadar mengimplementasikan sebuah filsafat yang diawang-awang yang lalu dilaksanakan oleh para petani kita di lapangan sehingga subak disebut sebagai subak as implementation of the tree hita karana filosofi itu artinya UNESCO mengakui PBB mengakui kalau ingin melihat Implementasi dari filsafat kerita kerana biar saja cuba kita di Bali. satu konsep yang sangat luhur yang pertama adalah harmoni kemudian ada konsensus jadi sepanjang mereka uh, memiliki satu pikiran untuk membangun satu harmoni di sanalah mereka akan membangun konsensus termasuk bagaimana cara membagi air nah dalam perkembangannya subak yang memiliki filosofi cerita karana yang sangat bagus itu ada banyaklah gangguan-gangguan 
Jadi dalam tanda petik yang menjadi satu hambatan atau persoalan yang dihadapi oleh Subak. Nah dengan adanya sekolah lapangan ini, ini saya sangat senang. Jadi sudah dipelopori, sudah sampai yang ketujuh. Ini luar biasa. Karena dari yang pertama, kedua, sampai yang keenam ini ternyata menghasilkan banyak sekali gagasan-gagasan dan tidak hanya gagasan-gagasan dalam bentuk ide wacana, tetapi gagasan-gagasan yang implementatif. Sehingga dari sekolah lapangan ini benar-benar bisa melihat uh, ketiga komponen yang ada dalam subak itu menjadi satu bagian, menjadi dasar untuk menghasilkan satu gagasan-gagasan yang paling tidak segera bisa diimplementasikan oleh kita sendiri secara kecil, tetapi oleh pemerintah nanti dengan perangkat-perangkatnya secara lebih masif. Tujuan Bali International Field School for Suba atau Sekolah Lapangan Suba adalah yang pertama memberikan pengenalan pemahaman tentang Suba secara menyeluruh, terutama terkait dengan berbagai data hasil penelitian suba yang telah dilakukan sebelumnya dan dipadukan dengan pengamatan lapangan dari peserta sekolah lapangan ini. Dan yang kedua adalah memberikan pengenalan langsung, berdialog dan juga berinteraksi, serta menyentuh langsung dan melakukan kegiatan-kegiatan di lapangan untuk mengenal tradisi masyarakat Bali, khususnya di desa Selat yang terkait dengan suba. Dan yang ketiga adalah mendorong optimisme dan juga berbagai gagasan untuk selalu mengawal kelestarian Suba. Kita berharap bahwa semua pihak mengambil peran masing-masing dimulai dari diri sendiri dengan komitmen diri apa yang bisa diberikan sebagai sumbangsih untuk mengawal kelestarian Suba. Dan juga mengingatkan berbagai peran penting lainnya terutama khususnya pemerintah, baik pemerintah pusat sampai ke pemerintah daerah dan bahkan di tingkat desa adat sekalipun dan di organisasi Suba sendiri untuk mengambil langkah-langkah dalam mengawal kelestarian Suba. Sekolah lapangan Suba ini mungkin hanya satu dari sekian banyak upaya tapi kami mencoba bahwa dengan kegiatan kecil kami ini bisa memberikan warna sumbangsih untuk juga masukan gagasan dan selalu mendorong bahwa kita memiliki suba yang sangat penting dan sangat luar biasa yang diwariskan oleh para leluhur kita dan diakui tidak hanya di Indonesia tapi juga oleh dunia sehingga mari kita bersama-sama terus mengawal kelestarian suba. Salam Lestari! Okay, wait. I'm still finding ways how to stop sharing. Ah, there you are. Okay. Right. So I hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, wait. Okay, so the video mentioned many interesting things. First is how Suba has been uh, recognized as a World Heritage by UNESCO and that the official title from UNESCO is a Suba as a cultural landscape of Bali province. The Suba system as the manifestation of the Trihita Karana philosophy. Now in the video, Trihita Karana has also been mentioned quite a lot. But what is it exactly? Though simply put, Trihita Karana is the Balinese philosophy of balance, the harmony between man, nature, and the creator. It's kind of like a rule of three. Everything in Suba is to adhere to the balance of these three aspects. Um, now I'm sharing this picture. This is drawn by the PIFSS participant last year. Now deeper still, Suba must also have this tree. Um, the bottom left, there is Pawongan, the harmony between fellow humans. 
And then on the bottom right is palamahan, the harmony between human and nature. And finally, on the top there is parahyangan, the harmony between human and the creator. If we neglect just one aspect, if we do farming, if we do farming without caring for our fellow farmers, or without caring for uh, the nature, or without the spiritual aspect of it, and then even if the tangible result is the same, if even if the paddy field is beautiful, then it is not so bad because the cornerstone that is the balance, the harmony between these aspects is not there. So next is significance of Sumba. First is the balance, the harmony, as we have mentioned earlier. And it's also rather ancient. It's been practiced for over a millennium now. And it's more than just an agricultural water supply. Suba has social, cultural, and economic, economical functions as well. Okay. Um, the, so the functions of Suba, the main function is to, this, the main the visible, the tangible one is to distribute communal water through irrigation to keep the paddy fields in the community alive. And then Suba also gives the incentives to consistent, consistently maintain water resources and irrigation channel, thereby serving an environmental function. And also it's a communal activity, which means uh, sharing manpower, sharing funds, and thus serving as an economic function. It's also organized enough to have a union, an organization to manage the whole thing, uh, named Kalian Suba, and uh, with communal rules, their own rules, and thus serving a social function. And finally, related to spiritual aspects, Subak is associated with a lot of rituals from planting to harvest and thus serve cultural function to conserve those rituals. But there are also many challenges faced by Subak. And among the most dire is in 2014, when Subak in Bali received a warning from UNESCO. And the reason behind that is massive infrastructure development. Bali has lost around 200 and over 288,000, no, I mean 2,800, sorry, 2,800 hectares of paddy fields per year. And that is the statistic before the pandemic. And agriculture sector in Bali only amounts to 30% of all sectors. This is all data from our Subar expert, Prof. India in 2021. And one of his words, Professor Rindia's words that resonates with me the most is that he once during during a PFF, as I think in 2019, I think, he predicted that if this goes on, then Suba will likely go extinct in 2030. So that's just uh, scary and sad. I mean, this is a beautiful heritage that has managed to exist for a millennia. And it's going to disappear in our generation. And, and for what? For helipads, for fancy hotels, for more tourist money? And from my own limited knowledge and relatively short time dealing with Suba, um, this heritage is actually quite adaptive. Uh, how else can it manage to survive so long? It can adapt to the time period. It's, it can grow with its people. As long as there is balance, theoretically, Suba will always be there. But now the fact is that Suba is threatened to disappear. So going for me, going, going by that, that logic, that could only mean that perhaps the recent development is probably not balanced at all. Since Suba welcomes development so long that it has balanced like its core values. That is my own understanding. So um, the next challenge to Suba is a bit harder because it's technically outside our control the volcanic eruptions. So Bali is part of the ring of fire, a string of volcanoes formed from major tectonic plates. And it gives us a lot of earthquakes and eruptions, but also fertile soil from past volcanic activities. If you notice in the video, um, you can see a mountain looming uh, at the background, uh, just behind the, the paddy fields, right? Now that's Mon Mount Agu the highest point in Bali, considered sacred by locals and has gifted fertile land suitable for farming, as you have seen. But it is also still pretty much an active volcano, which latest eruption happened in 2017. And it is quite an impact, especially to farmers in close proximity to the mountain. Now, we, we cannot control the force of nature like natural disaster or climate change. We can only learn how to adapt to continue to live alongside it 
doing our best to prepare for the worst. The, this is actually, a, this phenomenon actually addressed in one PIFSS session in 2018, when we visited farmers and subak stakeholders fresh from the eruption experience. I will share more details about this later. Now the Subak Field School, Bali International Field School for Subak. It is first founded, now a brief history of the field school. It's first founded to combine efforts of the Indonesian Heritage Trust, Bali Kuna Heritage Society that uh, back then, and now it is Bali Kuna Santi Foundation. Yeah. And then Kyoto Design School and Gianya District of Bali. And uh, uh, the first, it was first founded in 2015. And it continues in 2016 with the theme towards sustainable cultural landscape of Suba. And the result for this year's, that year's five, uh, field school is a uh, Guiana recommendation on the sustainability of Suba. It was disseminated at the World Culture Forum at Guiana on uh, 10th October 2016. Okay. In 2017, the theme was Suba sustainability, challenges and strategies from information to emotion. Now this one touch another specific element that is more related to information and education. And the result of this year's field school is exhibition design for a new Subak Museum in Gianyar, the IT-based museum Subak Masjati. And in 2018, that's when I first joined, uh, the theme it was Resilient Subak System for Natural Disaster Preparedness. Now this is a response to Mount Agung's eruption in late 12 in late 2017, and also the first time the field school expanded from just Kianyar to Kianyar and Karangasem. Now we had dialogues and exchange ideas with farmers and other stakeholders about disaster mitigation. Now in 2019, the theme was the landscape of Karangasem, the harmony between man, nature, and the creator. Now this time is fully held in Karangasem, exploring the landscape of the Regency, the potential, the challenges, the deep philosophy of Trita Karana still wonderfully maintained. Now we, present, we presented what our findings the result in front of the Karangasem region, and also we produced posters to participate in the Karangasem Subak Festival 2019. Now in 2020, the COVID-19 pandemic strike, as we all know and familiar with. Um, the field school adapted to the situation by holding an online session under the theme Subak in the pandemic, legacy in building resilience. It's also doubled as an online reunion, calling representatives from previous PIFSS participants to share their experience. Now, this is the recommendation as a result of the 2016 BFSS. Now, the point is mostly aiming towards improving farmers and their families' welfare because they are among the foundation of the system. The recommendation is, uh, was read to and accepted by the region of Kenya at that time, though the region has changed now, so we might need a renewal on this front. Now, BIFSS 2021, the seventh year. Now, the, the theme was the role of youth in building sustainable and resilient super. Now, this is a special one because due to the pandemic restrictions on travel, we have to adapt to many things that year. First of all, the previous BIFSS participants are a cross generation and multinational and uh, from, all, from all over Indonesia. And we also invited from abroad, but it was, uh, we, we, it was restricted due to the pandemic situation. Now, previous BIFSS, there are students, both local and international, there are professionals, both young and old, and sometimes we even got farmers from other parts of Indonesia joining to give their perspective. So it's always a very broad selection of participants with varying degrees of knowledge. So we have to spend some time first to get everyone equally updated on what SUBAC is, on its significance, its latest development. In 2021, however, the participants are mostly Balinese students from Warmadewa University who studies architecture. So the participants already know about the basics of SUPA, already familiar with the concept of Trihita Karana and thus require less introduction on SUPA and they can uh, go directly to identify and try to tackle the issues. There's also participants from outside Bali, but they are all also young professionals. So that year's theme is truly about the young generation and what they can do for SUPA. Now the location for BIFS 2021 is in Slat Village, Karangasem Regency. As you can see here, and the home base is in a cultural retreat site called Chirotumbu. 
Now, this is where the participants stayed, slept, and also learned together. And also the aerial view of the site, as you can see, is surrounded by paddy fields. It's tranquil, the air is fresh, and the greeneries are sight to see. Now, these are the young participants divided into three groups. Yeah, the, partic this, the participants here, they got mentored by two Subak experts, Prof. Windia and Prof. Sedana from Dwijendra University, and also their own lecturers from Warmadewa University. And most importantly here, uh, they are also mentored closely by local farmers and super organizers from Kalian Subak Selat. Since they are mostly architecture students, this year's PIFSS is focused more on mapping. I have no engineering degree myself, but I will try my best to summarize. We... Why is it not? Okay, there you are. Oh, okay. okay. So this is the map produced by group one. They are using a combination of uh, drones, Google Earth, and pictures they take online to identify boundaries of Subak Selat and landmarks associated with nature, as you can see water channels, uh, representation of community, as you can see Bali Suba. And uh, uh, Bali Suba is a town hall, kind of like a town hall dedicated to Suba. And also representation of spirituality, as you can see a temple for Suba related ritual, Pura Puseh, I think that's the one, yeah. Okay. They also identified several challenges and proposed solutions, such as there is a waste problem for organic and inorganic trash, which may need bank sampah or a waste bank to manage. And then there is a sedimentation and brokerage problem on irrigation channels. And we'll, uh, they propose a regular and coordinated cleaning effort by the community. And there's a, a, a problem of accessibility, lots of damaged trails. They, they propose maintenance effort to local government. Okay, as for group two, they also produce a map, but they went a different way than group one. So they went this way. I think group one went that way. Okay, so their map their maps actually complement each other. Now, this group also noted down landmarks related to man-made structure, natural structures, and spiritual sites, but they are especially taking interest in irrigation system, the water channels. And they made quite, in my opinion, an interesting insight. So uh, so the water channels, they are actually traditionally equipped to filter to filter filter trash. However, it was for organic trash. Time has have changed. Not only organic trash made their way into the channels, but also modern waste like plastics. So the channels need to adapt to this modern situation. And their proposal is to build a bangunan sadap. I think it's some tapping construction on the channels to filter waste, especially in organic ones, and also to provide more waste bin nearby. So they will throw their trash in the waste bin instead of in the water channels. Now for group three. Now this group, this is the group with young professionals, not students. So they have a slightly different approach. Now they identified that in general, the challenges in Subak are land conversion, uh, up to 2,000 2, hectares per year and limitations in human resource and slow regeneration of Subak, of Subak farmers. While specific challenges in Salat village are limitations in the power of Subak organization in conserving Subak itself, significant decrease in human resources for the five, five, past five years from 384 to 324 farmers. And lastly, insufficient data and information on the history of Subak at Salat village. And to try and tackle this, the group proposed for the village to conduct a comprehensive cultural mapping to map out heritage potential the village has and to make it more manageable. So more about group trees cultural mapping. They, uh, this is taken from their uh, presentation. I translated it for this one. And uh, they define cultural mapping as a series of holistic approaches to record, identify, document, analyze for significance, interpret, and finally compile the result in form of information that can be utilized as needed. It is actually quoted from Dr. Titin, today's moderator. So Dr. Titin, thank you for the knowledge. Now, and the purpose for cultural mapping specific to Salat Village are um, the tracing and identifying heritage research in the village from a multi multidisciplinary perspective. And the results of cultural mapping can be used to further support holistic planning. And that also includes social, cultural, environmental, and economic aspect with a sustainable approach. And finally, a comprehensive cultural map can be the foundation for planning an area-based conservation. Okay, now this is the map. 
the group only has around two or three days to prepare the map. So this is just the beginning. Hopefully with more time and more people involved from various backgrounds, like community leaders, academics, governments, and a more com broad comprehensive map can be drawn. Now for the summary of the entire field school last year, now after observation, gathering data on land and on air, as well as close interaction with farmers and representatives of Suba organization, the participants have identified various challenges faced by the village Suba system. And they also have relayed the challenges as well as a proposed solution to the villagers and government representative. In this case, represented by the vice region of Karangasam on the final day. Now, all, all in all, the participants, they agreed that Subak Slat is still in relatively good condition compared to other places. Some of them uh, told me that in their place, they barely have any paddy fields. They remember that there are some paddy fields when they are young, but now that when they are grown, they disappear and, and change into hotels. Some of them told, told me, told me uh, shared with me that story. So, uh, so Subak Slat is in, still in relatively good condition. The balance is there. Trihita Karana is still there. However, cracks are beginning to show. And if not addressed properly, Subak Slat may be threatened in a few years like many other Suba across the island. And so the 20, 2021 Subak Field School turns out to be a preventive case study to build future resilience. Now, I also would like to provide a contrasting experience with Field School from 2018. As I have mentioned earlier, PFF, PFSS in 2018 took on the theme Resilient Subak System for Natural Disaster Preparedness. It was held post Mon Agong eruption in late 2017, 2017 and covered two regencies, Kianyar and Karangasam. With Karangasam being closer to the mountain, they suffered significantly more casualties. So in 2018, the participant had dialogues with disaster stricken farmers and government officials regarding Subak sustainability and contingency plan at the time of disaster. Now the outputs are leaning towards disaster mitigation in cultural heritage conservation. So it's more practical such as developing a system like an online app to help farmers warn each other and coordinate effectively in the eve of disaster. There's also a suggestion of alternatives such as uh, suppose the fields are covered in ash and cannot be farmed for a while. Farmers can try alternatives such as hydroponic farming, greenhouse, etc. Now all in all, uh, both are about Suba conservation efforts of a heritage related to nature and people's livelihood. But 2018 and 2021, they feel completely different to me. 2018 have more sense of urgency, maybe because of disaster is still fresh and we can see what's at stake and have this resolution not to see it happening a second time. Well, in 2021, the conditions are marginally better, but there is also this underlying like calm before the storm feel. It is in good condition for now, but is it strong enough? Is it resilient enough to survive the coming challenges, both from man-made and from nature? So my final perspective, Subak is an ancient, a complex heritage, a millennia old tradition of friendship with nature that prevails to this day. Now, in a glance, it may seem to be strictly Balinese. I mean, it's, the foundation is something called Trihita Karana that is deeply etched, rooted in Balinese culture, but it has unexpectedly universal values, mutual respect and balance between nature, humanity, and spirituality. This is also the foundation of recognition by UNESCO, these universal values. Now, it also has multiple layers and functions, both tangible and intangible. The lush green fields under the mountain, the clear streams, the temples are Suba. The connection that farmers have with, with their lands, their efforts in sharing water to share blessings, helping each other in times of need, the prayers they offer to, for good harvest, they are also part of Suba. Now, I've only participated four times in this field school, and almost every time there is always something new to learn, some new layers to open. So every time I think to, to myself, okay, I think I understand Suba, and then there is always something new that made me go, nope, not yet. So I think Suba research, this field school, they can continue long in the future because there are just so many layers, so many stories to uncover when it comes to heritage like, like Suba. Stories that might be ordinary for farmers, for local Balinese who have known it all their lives, but for others like me, well, this is a bit of a late introduction, but I'm actually not from Bali. I'm from Java Island. So yeah, so yeah, for me, uh, learning about this, uh, learning something new about Suba every single time I go to this field school is is all fascinating to learn, and it also helps me to understand humanity in the whole. 
And also, Suba is adaptable to progression of time. I imagine this is why the heritage managed to survive for a millennia. We can use newer technologies to assist Suba conservation as long as it's keeping its core value, the balance and harmony in mind. Now, uh, as evidenced by the field school last year, there are multiple ways for young people to participate in Suba conservation, beginning with awareness of what it is, its significance, what it can teach us to become a better human, better society. Next, to identify its challenges, both man-made related to development as well as climate change and try to find the solution. Some solutions can be as straightforward as revitalizing a water irrigation system. While some solution may take a long time and effort for a lot of people like creating a cultural map. Some solutions may use technologies like drones and Google Earth, while some may be as simple as rotating schedule to clean the river. Any solution, as long as they keep, they keep balance in mind, I think will benefit Suba in one way or another. And finally, as changing ideas, uh, we young people need to learn from other generation. That is just fact. Those with more experience in life ought to be the teacher. I've talked with other young people in a Suba volunteer group, and we once discussed how some oral traditions, some local wisdom, such as reading the seasons, reading the stars, farmer's calendar are understood less and less in young generation. So we, we need, we truly need to learn from the older ones. However, this is also not, it doesn't mean that the, line, that the learning should be one-sided. The young generation also has an edge, especially in navigating the current world, especially when it comes to information technology. So uh, simple as maybe posting your experience at Suba Field School in social media, getting your peers interested enough to comment, what are you doing in the fields in the middle of nowhere? Well, it can open a whole new conversation and perhaps bringing awareness of this heritage to yet another person. Okay, I think I have shared enough of my perspective here. Thank you very much for the opportunity and for listening. Now it's open for discussion, right? I will do my best to answer, and please, if I can make a request, nothing too technical. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much, Vidya, for your sharing about Suba, its challenges, and also mm -hmm. the experience of the field school on Suba with Indonesian Heritage Trust. Yeah, it's very interesting. Uh, maybe because uh, before we started for the discussion, maybe uh, I would like... Uh, summarize yeah i underline several uh, important issues maybe for your uh, presentations uh so by the implementation of uh, three hitakarana it's the balance or harmony a bit with man nature and the creator and therefore it is not just agriculture water supply yeah it also has social cultural and also uh, economical functions and uh, nowadays Suba faces so many challenges, uh, such as the massive development, such as infrastructure, land transformation uh, for tourism facilities, and so on. Yeah, uh, and Indonesian Heritage Trust uh, conducted a series of field school on Suba to raise the awareness on Suba since uh, 2015. Yeah, if I'm it's not mistaken. 15. Yes. Uh, yeah, because I actually uh, participated in the first uh, IFS, actually. <laughs> okay. Whoa! Uh, <laughs> yes, uh, this field school okay. uh, took several uh, different uh, places uh, each year and also a uh, various team yeah, based on what's happened uh, in the recent condition that need or necessary to pay attention. Yeah, I think that's uh, maybe the several... Uh, key points of uh, issues that uh, already presented by Vidya. And now I think the time for discussions. Uh, I still open for uh, questions from the participant. Please, if you have any questions, just please uh, drop your question in the uh, question and answer uh, box. Yeah, it is. Uh, we are very welcome uh, with the question from any uh, participants. I know here, uh, many participants uh, from different countries, yeah, from Southeast Asian countries. So uh, please, if you have any question, you can uh, just uh, write down in the question and answer box. Okay, uh, before uh, oh. we receive, oh, okay. One question already uh, arrived here. So, okay, uh, maybe, I will uh, read it uh, 
directly from Byung Chun. Uh, I'm sorry if uh, I have a mistake uh, how to pronounce uh, your name. Thank you for the presentation. I am Byung Chun Ko from South Korea. I want to know a little more about Suba irrigation system, especially how it distributes water as here in Korea. Uh, Gujiljang irrigation system works similar way, but not sure how it uh, differs. Uh, Widya, maybe mm -hmm. you can uh, answer about this question. Answer this one first. Okay, uh, uh, so I have no idea about Gujiljang irrigation system, but yeah, maybe I'll just uh, touch on the Suba. Yeah. Okay, so super Suba system, I think the keywords here, this is also a favorite keywords of Prof. India, is the one inlet and one outlet. So yeah, so water goes one way and goes out the other, goes out the other. So the system is uh, they have a uh, one. Okay, they have one. Uh, they are sharing a water resource. They are sharing a water and uh, and like um, how do you say a uh, land? Not not exactly the land. Uh, so that that one. So they have a single water source. Eh, please, please feel free to correct me if 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 it's uh, if it's uh, mistaken. But they have one single the, the one single water source, but they share, but they share. So uh, so they have kind of like a schedule schedule of some sort. So uh, this this season is that that uh, as a particular field, and then and then they open the open the hatch, and it it flows to the next field. That sort of thing. I think, and it's it's also not. Uh, so I think it's, uh, one of the uh, one of the key points of a suba is that it is not restricted with village boundaries. So a suba can consist of different villages. Uh, uh, so, for example, so for suba salat is not necessarily the only the village of salat, but it can also include some some. Uh, Petty fields of of other of other people, so it's a it's a it's a social structure of its own. So maybe I wonder if that answered the question. <laughs> but yeah, but I think this is this is the uh, what makes super dif what what makes super different is the hello. Okay, yeah, I hope uh, mm -hmm. it already answered. Uh, the question from Byung mm -hmm. Maybe if uh, mm -hmm. I can show a little bit uh, mm -hmm. image of. Uh, nah, there you are. <laughs> <laughs> maybe it, I, I, I don't know, but maybe uh, this uh, the right uh, picture uh, can help you. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, please, Vidya. Maybe you can help. Yeah, um, yeah. Uh, explain. Oh, both. very nice. Yes, yes. Yeah, so there is this uh, water water resource. This water resource, and then uh, wait, 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 wait. Can you uh, scroll down a little bit? Put it in. Done. Oh, mm -hmm. sorry. A uh, slow down. It's no, no. no. Uh, uh, yes. Uh, no, no, no. I mean, I want to see the the text. I want to oh, see the okay. text underneath. Oh, yeah. Oh, social technology, tech, technical and religious. Now. Okay, so there is this one. So as far as I understand, there is this one uh, uh, water resource and they and uh, upstream upstream and then as they flow downstream, the suba system uh, the suba system uh, coordinates organizes how to share that water, how to share that water. So they uh, and the concept is one inlet one outlet. So they put some sort of a door, I think, uh, in front of their on on their water channels. And when the field, uh, when when it's one field's turn to get irrigated, then they open the door and then they close it again. So that's that sort of thing, I think. Please feel free to correct me, fellow um, alumni. <laughs> yeah, and actually, uh, there are so many uh, participants also from Bali. I think. Ah yes, that is true. Okay. Right. Yeah. Uh, thank you, Idia, uh, for your mm -hmm. uh, answer. I think uh, it is mm -hmm. already uh, good mm -hmm. for Byung Chun. Okay, uh, mm -hmm. I will move to the next question. Yeah, it is from uh, Febrianti Suryaningsi, uh, Karya. Yeah, uh, is okay. the interest oh. from young people to work as farmer declining? Uh, and is there any system to ensure that the next generation to inherit uh, the sawah 
and the whole suba system. And the whole suba system. Yeah. Actually, this is a uh, this seems to be an uh, some some question that is easy to answer, but turns out it's not. If if you if I get this question maybe two or three years ago, I will say absolutely. It's uh, there is a regeneration issue and everything. But uh, these past few years, when I talk to some friends, uh, some friends also in heritage in Suba, actually, and and also talk with some farmers. Uh, participants of PFFS, PFSS, that's not necessarily the case, I think. It's, it's on a personal level, actually. Some people said, yeah, yeah, it's difficult to, it's difficult to get my son to farm, to, to continue being a farmer. But, but some farmers also said that uh, uh, they are willing to, they have, they have, they have regeneration. So it's, 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 a, it's a rather, it's, it's, it cannot be generalized, I think. It cannot be generalized. Um, some some young uh, I'm and I also see in some social media young farmers are proudly posting being uh, young generation. Some young generation proudly posting being farmers, and they are actually uh, 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 more IT minded and uh, seems to be doing well. So uh, I think the answer to that is that uh, maybe. Uh, number wise, it may decline, as we can see in Suba in 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 the in the in the presentation by Group Three. In number wise, it may be decline, but may not be as as severe as we thought, because some well, well there there are there are some families who who uh, are 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 not worried about succession, and also uh, this is also from my talk with a fellow young uh, young heritage enthusiast. Um, the system is not always uh, a field is not always does not always belong to a family. Sometimes it belongs to a landowner, and the farmers are hired hired hands. And in that case, um, I think the succession the succession is more. I mean, the succession problem is not as a fear because you can always hire. There is always a, a fine hired hand. So I hope that's that's uh that answers the question yeah i hope so uh i hope your uh mm -hmm. answer already uh, fit with the maria's questions yeah uh okay. if i remember about uh, this problem actually we also discuss about uh, this problem in in the beginning of the bifss mm -hmm. and we already mm -hmm. uh, give uh, the recommendation uh, in mm -hmm. Gianya recommendation, if I'm not mistaken, in 2016, yeah, yeah, in 2016, yes, yes. That, uh, some mm. uh, one of the recommendations uh, is to uh, provide scholarships in priority of the children of the subak farmers. So uh, we mm. hope that uh, uh, the children of the subak farmers they can uh, get uh, mm -hmm. the proper uh, education. So they have also uh, the mm -hmm. awareness uh, of uh, the importance of keeping uh, the suba uh, and inherit, it, uh, inherit uh, from uh, their uh, farmers' uh, parents. Yeah. So mm -hmm. hopefully yes. uh, the local uh, government follow up uh, our recommendation. I'm not sure about uh, today's uh, condition but uh, we hope so <laughs> we hope so i mean they, they have there has been it's 2016 right and the government i think I, I just checked that the region changed in 2018 so yeah hopefully this is one hopefully. of the policies that get passed down yeah yeah okay <laughs> thank you that. very much Vidya. okay mm -hmm. and then uh the third question it is from uh rudy anto okay. Uh, how to uh, conserve the suba system as uh, today's uh, there are so many uh, land transformations and conversion yeah. land conversion yes. yeah. oh well this is like the questions that pops up at every single very international field school <laughs> because the land conversion is a real problem it's a real problem and it's related it, it is connected to many things like from economy environment and social too um, I cannot make a definitive answer, uh, a very, I cannot give a practical and probably a execute, executable answer right now because 
because while I know that uh, land conversion is not doing good to our environment, to our, to our, to our environment, and to our yeah, to everything. But uh, who am I to to stop the farmers from to stop the farmers from selling their land if they if they are not if they are not uh, doing well as farmers, if they, uh, they don't have welfare as farmers, they have no choice but to sell their land and convert them into something more valuable than. So maybe, uh, no, maybe uh, rather than uh, prohibiting them or preventing them, don't sell your land or something, we need to uh, first make sure that they have no reason to sell the, those land to, to convert their lands. They, we need to help them, support them, uh, make sure that they have welfare, that their life is guaranteed for life. The life of the life of them and their families are guaranteed for life by being a farmer. That being a farmer is something they that can uh, be proud of and uh, can live can be a living for their families. So increasing the welfare of farmers so that they won't sell their lands. Maybe that's my thoughts. Maybe it's too naive, but that's why that's what I can say for now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I I know it's very difficult for uh for uh, the mm-hmm. land conversion problem because uh we know uh today the development is so massive uh happen in yes. everywhere yeah and then for bali uh especially uh it is a tourism destinations and uh we know also in uh, suba uh, suba area yeah uh it is uh yeah. already uh being the tourist destination and for some maybe for mm-hmm. tourist destination and we can see maybe uh several <laughs> points of the fields uh mm-hmm. rice field already conf- uh, converted into some uh, tourist uh, facilities a hotel restaurant yes. uh, area, and so on yes. you can see maybe in mm-hmm. uh jatilui for example yeah, yeah. It's very very massive yes. so it's very difficult very uh, but mm-hmm. maybe uh if we think uh about the maybe tax deduction for example so maybe mm. it is maybe mm. it is the the uh policy yeah from uh, the government side if they uh, mm-hmm. if they do some maybe uh, policy uh, in tax deduction and so on uh, maybe it will reduce uh, uh, the land conversion mm-hmm. yeah i think so uh, the law enforcement is very uh, very important there yeah Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah, law enforcement. Law enforcement. But oh well, actually, this one this makes me want to discuss something with you, Putit. Uh, in terms of law enforcement, from what I understand is that uh, since Indonesia has a decentralization policy, okay. so the laws are different, right? With every area, every re- every regency. So that's another layer of challenge, I think. Yes. yes. <laughs> because, yeah. That's very complex. <laughs> I know. Yeah. 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 Oh, okay. Thank you, Idia. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. the next question. Uh, we next we can question. still have time. How about us? Oh, we, we have time. <laughs> it is a uh, pass from. Do you uh, still have time? Yeah, but oh, yeah, uh, it's, I think it's it, past fifteen. Yeah. Uh, one question from uh, Brit Kayan, uh, from University Malaya, mm-hmm. uh, Malaysia. How could mm. it be the subak system is significant in terms of irrigation or water engineering as compared in Rom ancient time of traditional yet advanced mm. hydrology technology? Wow. Oh, okay. Okay. So from what I understand, subak system is uh, less about technology as in on the irrigation itself, but, but more on the on the philosophical, on the social, on the social part, on on the communal communal activities. So so there is no uh, breakthrough, a particular breakthrough in irrigation technology in Suba, but rather the the system, the 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 societies, the societal system, the philosophy that get that gets uh, passed down and the rituals associated with it. I think that that's what uh, makes 
Suba is a heritage. That's that's my perspective. Mm-hmm. Yeah, thank you, Idia. So uh, it is not about mm-hmm. the technology, yeah, but the system, how mm-hmm. uh, they conduct uh, the traditional system inside uh, their uh, agriculture system and social system in in the community. community yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, okay. I don't know. Uh, host, we, can we still uh, add a more time? Uh, because uh, there are several... Uh, questions coming uh no uh, it is a question from claudia angel what's the vision and mission of the subex scholarship uh, oh, so actually it is, yeah actually it is just our recommendation yeah not not uh the the program that actually already uh done by a government i, I don't know uh, in in the no. in bali but uh, in our uh, recommendations uh, it is uh, to provide the uh, better education for uh, Suba owners uh, children yeah uh, we hope uh, mm-hmm. with better education they can have uh, more more uh, knowledge uh, to manage uh, their uh, future as a farmer and also maybe mm-hmm. advanced farmer yeah to inherit uh, their parents uh, Suba Okay, and then maybe uh, I think it is the last questions uh, from Q In Angkor, the law says heritage land is public property. Then uh, there is regulation that villagers can only sell their lands within uh, villagers or inherit uh, two generations. Just common. Thank you. Oh, it is it is just common uh, mm-hmm. in case okay. in uh, in the in the Angkor case. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So it, maybe it's I a little see. bit. Uh, different, yeah, in Bali, yeah, because yeah, they can, they can yeah, yeah. To everyone. Angkor is an area. I mean, uh, the whole area is a heritage site, like right area based conservation. Yeah, yeah. In Bali, is still yeah, a different, a different case. Maybe we can, if we can make Bali like Angkor, then maybe. <laughs> okay. Yeah, because in okay, Bali, it's a sorry. private land, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah. Thank you okay. very much, uh, Vidya, for uh, your mm-hmm. talk today and also uh, the discussion. I think it's very mm-hmm. different. Hopefully, uh, our talk today can mm-hmm. uh, give some any experience, uh, inspiration uh, for others uh, about uh, what is Subak and uh, maybe uh, some uh, problems and also challenges that face uh, by Subak uh, to this. Uh, thank you for the participants who already joined us today. Uh, maybe see you in the next uh, chat time. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, and also be- uh, before we end uh, our program, uh, I would like to uh, invite uh, our participants to uh, subscribe. Uh, Shicha's uh, YouTube channel and follow us uh, on Shicha's Facebook. Thanks very much for your coming today. See you. Thank you. Have, happy weekend. Uh, yeah, happy weekend. <laughs>